get a lot of calls and emails, YouTube messages from folks that are, for lack of a better word, demonized, substantially afflicted by all kinds of stuff, been messing with them, maybe for a long, long time. A lot of times they don't feel like there's any hope for them. They're riddled with anxiety and fear and depression and and lust and anger and bitterness and even murder and all kinds of things and they don't understand how God could use them for anything they don't believe that God could redeem them they think that somehow they need to be perfect and clean and, and flawless before God will use them for anything or even be willing to help them of course that's a lie from the enemy it's not consistent at all with scripture it's not consistent with the kind of people that Jesus picked as his apostles one that he knew was a traitor and was going to turn on him get him crucified others that were angry hot-headed fishermen or zealots that were out to overthrow the government or tax collectors or all kinds of riffraff which he likes to use because it brings him more glory <clears throat> I want to uh, make this video, this is something that the Lord has me tell people this story occasionally and a lot of the videos are simply um, stories that things the Lord has me communicate to people in ministry situations and by doing it on the videos um, it, it like multiplies the amount of people getting ministry without me having to tell the same story over and over to 50 or 100,000 whatever different people and <clears throat> the thing is Sometimes people come for ministry and I go to tell them a story and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I watched that video. Okay, well, let me tell you this. Oh, no, I watched that video too. <laughs> okay, so there's really nothing to do. Um, <clears throat> anyway, but this is, we're going to play a little Bible trivia um, question here, okay? <clears throat> um, I, uh, I just, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, pause, pause the video. And then go do your research. I'm going to give you a little pause here after I ask you the question. And you go and do some research and see if you know the answer to this question. And uh, um, then uh, if you turn the video upside down, then the answer is on the underside. Uh, well, not really. But uh, anyway, here's the question. Okay? Who was the first missionary that Jesus sent out? Okay? That's the question. Who was the first missionary that Jesus sent out? And I'm going to pause here, and uh, you go look it up. Uh, stop the video, and uh, go look it up now. You're, you're not really doing it, are you? I mean, you're just not really even going to go try. You're just going to wait for me to tell you the answer instead of even trying to look it up, aren't you? All right, fine. Okay, look. Uh, okay, we know that Jesus sent out the 70 disciples in pairs to go ahead of him into cities and heal and deliver people, right? And then from the 70, he chose the 12 that were his apostles, and he sent them out in pairs. And they went out and delivered people and healed people and everything. And they were all excited and they came back. And, hey, even the demons are subject to us. This is great. And uh, he says, don't boast the demons are subject to you. Boast that you know me. And anyway, so he sent out the 70. He sent out the 12. Um, later on, at the, at the end of Mark, at the end of Matthew, he gives the Great Commission, sends all of us out. But there was somebody that he sent out before that. And uh, it's really pretty. And... Uh, so I want you to turn with me, and see if you got this right. <clears throat> I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from a King James, as it, as it happens. Okay, here it is, ready? And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often bound, he, he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. 
And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Okay, we got a guy living in the catacombs, living in caves, so strong, so demonically possessed, chains can't hold him, nothing holds him, everybody's afraid of him, he's a cutter, he's up there cutting himself, slicing himself with stones and stuff, for a long time, we don't know, years, he has his dwelling among the tombs. This is a very scary dude. Verse 6, And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I beg you by God that you torment me not. Okay, the first words out of his mouth were, Jesus, please don't torture me. <laughs> Why do you think he said that? Because maybe he expected Jesus to torture him. Uh, anyway, for he said unto, and Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And the man answered him, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Okay, the demons are actually answering. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Okay, he doesn't want to get cast to the abyss. The demons don't send us out, out to the abyss. Uh, whatever. Now there was, there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Now, uh, Gadara, the, the land of the Gadarenes, is uh, mostly Roman controlled, mostly pagan. That's why they got pigs. They, they ain't pigs in Jerusalem. They don't like pigs. They don't eat pigs. But there's this huge herd of swine feeding and all the devils begged him besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Jesus gave them leave to do so okay why is he given in to demons well partly because I guess Jews don't like pigs but but partly because the first words out of his mouth were worship even the demon hits his knees and says you are the Son of God, please have mercy. And I, I don't, maybe Jesus is so tender hearted, if you hit your knees and beg and plead, even, even then, you know, he's going to give you a chance. Now, I don't know what happened to the demons and the pigs, but here's how the story goes uh, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 pigs and were choked in the sea. That, that means they died. And they, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. So everybody's like, hey, where'd our pigs go? And they're coming out to see this crazy thing, this like, like lemmings there, all these pigs jumping in the sea together and drowning and dying. I mean, that cost a lot of money to somebody. And they came to Jesus and saw him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Why were they afraid? Were they afraid of the guy that was in the chains and the fetters living in the catacombs? Uh-uh. They were afraid of Jesus. Because they just saw him do something they could have never done. And they know this is God. This is scary big. Okay. Um, and they that saw it told, him, told them how it befell to him that he was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray Jesus, him, to depart out of their coast. Because it's costing them a lot of animals. And, and when he was coming to the ship... He that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Okay? The guy that came out of the catacombs said, Please let me go with you. Please let me go with you, Jesus. He's real grateful. This guy's really grateful. And Jesus says to him, and it says, How be it? Jesus suffered him not. You can't come. But saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great the things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Decapolis, that's ten cities, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. The first missionary Jesus ever sent out is the most demonized guy in the Bible. And he didn't go in pairs. He didn't need an accountability partner. He didn't heal people. He didn't deliver people. He just shared his testimony. Because what Jesus did to him and how grateful he was was so amazing nobody could deny and all men did marvel at Jesus and at his story have faith be strong Jesus uses the foolish things to confound the wise the most demonized guy in the Bible is the first missionary Jesus ever sent out more on this from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com